period of the sultans because from 1206 to 1206 to 1526 this is known as the period of the sultans because many rulers ruled India most the northern part of India from 1206 to 1526 before we move ahead with the chapter According to your revised syllabus, one of the things that you need to study from this is that you have to study about Qutub Minar, who built it when it was built, and some structural features. And the next one that you have to study is about the political history and administration of Alauddin Khilji and Muhammad bin Tughla. Okay, this I'll be explaining to you later on, slowly, as you move ahead with the chapter. Now to understand how it began, the Delhi Sultan period or the Turkish rulers started ruling India. Okay? And the foundation of the Turkish rule in India was done by Muhammad Khan. Muhammad Khan, which is in Afghanistan. Okay, the Muhammad Khan of Afghanistan came to India and conquered certain territories in northern part of India. Okay, and when he came to India, he had to fight battle. And the historically, there was this one battle, two battles were fought, known as the first battle of Tarain in 1191 and second battle of Tarain in 1192. These are not necessary for you according to the syllabus, but to understand, I am just letting you know. Two battles were fought by Muhammad Ghor when he invaded India in 1191 and 1192, known as the first battle of Tarek and second battle of Tarek. Okay? When he fought the second battle of Tarek, he had to fight against Prithiviraj Chawla. Okay? He was a ruler of northern India and he defeated and later what happens, he goes back to Afghanistan and lives Qutubuddin Ayba. Qutubuddin Ayba was a governor to look after the territories that Muhammad of Ghor had established in India or Kangra. And the real foundation of the what he called Delhi Sultanate was done by Qutubuddin Ayba. Okay? And there were many many dynasties from 1206 to 1526 many dynasties or many rulers ruled India. The first one is called as the slave dynasty. Slave dynasty. Then we have the Khalji's. Then we have the Tuklas. Sahids. And the Nobis. Okay? These were the different dynasties that ruled India from 1206 to 1526, the period of the Sultans. The first dynasty to be established was the Slave Dynasty. Why this was the Slave Dynasty? Because, as I told you, Kutubid Aipa was the real founder. He led the real foundations too. Okay? The beginning was done by Muhammad Ghori. And Kutubuddin Aipa was a slave of Muhammad Ghori. Later on, what he became? He became a governor general or the governor and became the ruler of northern South India or became the first strong ruler or the founder of the slave dynasty in India. Who was it? Kutubuddin Aipa. Kutubuddin Aipa. Okay, all these are not necessary, but just to understand the chapter as we go ahead. When we study about the article, this 
Allah bin Khalji and Muhammad bin, Muhammad bin Turlaq to be easier for you. So the foundation began, the Turkish rule, the beginning of the Turkish rule in India started with the invasion of Muhammad Ghor. Okay? Muhammad of Ghor, which is Afghanistan. He came to India, fought two battles, first battle of Turin and second battle of Turin. In the second battle of Turin, he defeated Um Prithiranath Chaudhary. And later he went back and left Kutubuddin Aibak to govern those places which was gone. And the real foundation was of the slave dynasty was done by Kutubuddin Aibak. Clear or not clear? Now we will move ahead with the chapter according to your syllabus. Now to know about the Delhi Sultanate or the Sultans, what are the important source? Okay, are the what you call Kutub Minar. Kutub Minar. Besides Kutub Minar, there are many mosques, pillars were built by the Sultans. Okay, many inscriptions are also there, which were written in Arabic, Persian, and Sanskrit. Okay, and Kutub Minar is one of the important pillar. Okay, it is the highest or the tallest tower in India, tallest stone tower in India, built by the Delhi Sultans or the rulers of the slave dynasty. Okay, now we need to know about Kutub Minar. Who built it? When it was built? What is it made of? And some sort of structural features okay now Kutub Minar was built by the starting was done by Kutub Uddin Aiba okay it was done in Kutub Uddin Aiba in 1199 the starting building of the Kutub Minar began in 1199 and it was started by who sorry uh, yeah, it was started by Kutub Uddin Aiba The building of Kutub Minar began in the year 1199 by who? Kutub Uddin Paiva and it was completed by Il Kutmis. It was completed by Il Kutmis in the year 1230. 1230 AD. Okay? Kutub Minar one of the tallest stone pillar in India was built on the foundation of the beginning construction began or started by Kutub Uddin by Bhakti in the year 1190 and it was completed by Kirtul which is one of the successors of the Delhi Sultans in the year 1238. Now from where do or how does this stone pillar get its name? Okay? The Kutub Mina has been named after a Muslim or the Turkish saint whose name was Kutub Uddin. Kutub Uddin Bhaktiya. Okay? This stone pillar that we are talking about, which is one of the sources to know about the Delhi Sultan there, gets its name from Kutub Uddin Bhaktiya who was a Muslim saint. The construction began in the year 1199. It was done by Kutub Uddin Aiba and it was completed by Il Kutmis in the year 1230 AD. Got it? How does it, from where does it get this name? The stone pillar gets its name from one of the Muslim saints known as Kutub Uddin Bhaktiya. The second thing, now Kutub Minar is in Delhi, you know it. Kutub Minar is in Delhi. Okay? Now let us try to know or learn, understand some of its structural features. What type of pillar is it? What is it made of? Now, Kutub Mina is a circular tower, first one. 
It's a circular tower and rises up. I have 72.5 meters. Okay, it rises up to the height of 72.5 meters. It's a circular tower. Please, you will look at your textbook and you'll be able to see the Kutub Minar. I have seen the stone pillar in many of the places, in many of the what of GK books and other history books. First structural feature is it's a circular tower that rises up to 72.5 meters in height. Okay? And it's diameter. Okay, so circular tower. Okay, and what is the height of this one? 72.5 meters. The diameter of this tower is 2.75 meters. First structural feature, it's a circular tower that rises up to the height of 72.5 meters. Okay, now, this tower has five stories. One, two, three, Four, okay, let's see this one. Five stories. One, two, three, four. Okay, one more. Five stories. Okay, it's a five story tower rising up to the height of two point, sorry, 72.5 meters. And the diameter is 2.75 meters. Clock, got it? Now, each story is separated here. If each story is separated from each other by projecting balconies are there. Balconies are there. You will have to put in drawing or still try to understand. So each story is separated by a projecting balcony is from each other. Okay? And what is that? There is a spinal staircase. Spinal staircase leading to each tower. Okay? This is spinal staircase. As we go up, we have to climb through the spinal staircase. And the spinal staircase leads to each balcony. Okay? And each balcony is separated by a projecting tower. Do you get it or not? Next one. It's a circular tower that rises up to the height of 72.5 meters. Second one, there's a Circular stages lead to each balcony. Okay? And the balconies or the each balcony or the stories are separated by by projecting balconies. Okay? Hope you understood this much. Okay, the next one. What materials were used to make this tower, stone tower? First and foremost, the stone tower. So, third, fourth, red sandstone, marble, red sandstone, marble were used to make this tower. Okay, what is it made of? It is made of red sandstone, marble and other materials also. Okay, now in this tower, inside the walls of the tower, there are many writings and inscriptions. Many writings and inscriptions. Okay, and most of the inscriptions are in Persian, Arabic and Sanskrit. Okay, and inside the walls of the people, there are many inscriptions and there are many flower images or four more technical of the flower images are there. Inscriptions are there and flower designs images are there within the walls of the Kutub Minar. 
Okay? Besides this, there are other certain features which are there in your book. And these are some of the important structural features that you need to know about the Qutub Bihar. Okay? The Delhi Sultanate from 1206 to 1526, it's known as the period of Sultans. And the Sultans ruled over northern India. Okay? It was a medieval period. And the foundation of the Delhi Sultanate, the beginning, rule, so was started by the invasion of Muhammad of Ghor. He came to India for two battles defeated Prithiviraj Chauhan and went back to Afghanistan and left Kutubuddin Aiba to look after the territories which was conquered by who? The Mahmud of Ghor. Okay? Then, the different types of the different what you call dynasties that ruled from 1206 to 1526 were the slave dynasty we have, the Khaljis, the Turklas, the Sayyids and the Lothis. These are not necessary but to understand our told you. And from this chapter, what are the things that you need to know? You have to know about the Qutub Minar, political history of Aladdin Khalji and Muhammad bin Dullah. Okay? Today we saw about the Qutub Minar. Once again, Qutub Minar is in Delhi. The beginning of the construction was done or started by who? Qutub Udin Ayyubha. And in the year 1999, and it was completed in the year 1230 by Ildur Mish. Okay, how does this tower frame from where does this tower get its name? It has been named after a Muslim saint known as Kutub Uddin, Kutub of Kutub Uddin Bhaktiya. Okay, then the structural features is a circular tower, the other one we can tell is is the highest stone tower in India. Highest stone tower in India. And it is a circular tower that rises up to the height of 72.5 meters. And there is a circular stairway. But you have to go around to reach each and every balcony or each and every story. And each and every story is separated by a projecting balcony. That I told you. Okay, that each and everything is there. The next one. What was there? What are they used? Each story is separated by projecting balconies. What are the materials used? Red sandstone, marble, etc. were used to make this Kutub Mina. And on the walls of the Kutub Mina, what do you find? You find lots of inscriptions, writings, engravings, which are either in uh, Persian, Arabic, or Sanskrit. Besides that, there are other floral designs or floral images on the Kutub. Mina. Okay? So this much if you keep in mind and learn and study that will be more than enough for Kutub Mina. The next class we will study about the administration of what political history and administration of Allah bin Khilji and Muhammad bin Tukla. Okay? And please do go through the exercises which are there at the end of the chapter, the previous chapters also. And if you have some difficulties, you are free to ask me. Okay? Good day, take care, thank you.